we will try to make <laughs> our first Express application. Yeah, welcome Express. You welcome Express. And uh, this is a demo that we will record to get you started with, with Express from, from, from the beginning. Yeah, from scratch. From Definitely. scratch, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so we will actually start in a totally blank um, Git repository uh, that we have created and uh, take it from there. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we are supposed to do in this uh, application is what you can see up here. Uh, so this is a pretty standard application with a form. We are submit submitting some kind of form data to the server. Mm -hmm. The server will process this data. In this case, it will not like try to save the data or anything. It will just process it and present it back to the user in a new HTML page. Yeah. Um, and it will look something like what we have here. Uh, well, it won't, it won't be Tuesday because it's it's another day today. Yeah. Mm. Well. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's Friday. <laughs> Friday. Friday. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's start. Uh, to do this now, I'm on the wrong wrong way around. This one. So we're in Visual Studio Code, uh, and we are in an empty repository. If we do an LS, it's just empty. empty. Yeah. Uh, what is the first thing we need to do? Well, we need to create an. Uh, package JSON and so on. So we start with npm init, and great that you don't that you didn't press enter because it's it's a great idea to to uh, add an minus minus da, y dash y dash y dash y. Uh, dash y. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, what, what this will happen is, is we don't need to answer all of those questions. It will just create a default yeah. uh, package JSON for us, and we will do that. Uh, so we got a package JSON um, like this. Actually, says "Welcome Express" as well, uh, which is the name of the application, and that is uh, because the name of the folder. Yeah, the folder. Uh, version 1.1, 1 .1, that's fine. Uh, of course, we can uh, write some description. Uh, we urge you to do that as well. Uh, An uh, example application showing off Express like that. Uh, it, it suggests that we start our uh, program in the index.js mm -hmm. and we could go with that. However, we usually use app.js. Yes. So, so in this case, we'll change that around. Uh, we have some scripts. We have a test script. We will probably add a start script as well. We mm -hmm. can wait a little bit about with that. Uh, some keywords, I think I will skip them. We have the author, in this case it's uh, Latet and uh, Matt's maybe. License, you always go for MIT, why? Habits. Habits, yep. everyone else does, nearly. Yeah. <laughs> a reason as good as any. Um, okay, so we have a basic stub file now. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, we will need some additional tools. Um, yes. Mm. We, we need Express, of course, since that's the framework that we will work with. Mm. Uh, we will need um, a, a view engine. We will probably wait a little bit with that. We will need some uh, libraries to handle dates, I guess. Yes. Uh, we will need a library to handle uh, um, the development environment, like well, logging. Logging as well. Yeah, you mm -hmm. have logging as well. Uh, we can add that. We, we need to add uh, some some server that will serve. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or, I mean, we, we create a server in the node, of course. However, we want something that is watching our files, restarting that server mm -hmm. whenever we do an update to our files. So we don't need to do that manually. And we will use node amount for that. Snazzy and standard as well, because the code because standard. standard. So it's probably just to get started then, uh, to get get started with adding libraries. And now we need to think about what libraries do we need for production and what libraries mm. do we need only for development. So we will start with the production ones. Yep. Um, and you did something very important here. I did. I yeah, saved. You, you saved yeah. the package JSON. <laughs> if I have forgotten that, it would have probably re 
well, you have yeah, yeah, problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, npm install, and we start with express. Yeah. Uh, and in this case, it's just minus s, right? Or is it? Well, you don't have to. Oh no, no. Room. Yeah, in this case, it's just like that. Let's go. Not anymore. Not anymore. I have an old version of npm though. Mm -hmm. well, let's see what happened. Yeah, it says we have uh, express as a dependency. Uh, you said that we were to use some kind of library for handling dates, and you found one that is called Moment. Yep. Uh, we'll add that Mom Moment. We will add that as well. Uh, we will add uh, a, a logging uh, Morgan. package, Morgan, mm -hmm. uh, MPNI Morgan. Um, and this is for now okay. I, we know that we will need a template engine, yep. a Express HPS yep. as well. So, so I will actually go Ooh. and go mm. add it. What? what? Mm. I'm not. I'm not told you everything. Okay. <laughs> Shouldn't that work? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Great. What, what what what's your concern? They, they, they updated it. Oh, okay. Mm. There were there were vulnerabilities. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. But Yesterday. Okay, but not today. <laughs> so good. Good thing to use the latest version. Then. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is what we need for production. I mean, of course, we need a view engine even in production. It's not just for development. Uh, let's go to what we need for development. Uh, and in this case, we will add Nodemon. And now I need a flag. And it's hard to see because yeah. he's in the way. I will clear. I do, or you can click, click. The, the icon on the up left. So you close to Explorer. Well, no. Nope. No? That one. Ah, you, you mean, ah, okay, now I can, yeah, uh, the other left. Uh, MPN, I know the man, uh, and then we do a save dev. And now, <laughs> uh, like that, right? Yep. And we needed snazzy. That one had some one vulnerability or something like that. No, nope. no, it just no, it did. Uh, no, the man, uh, and we needed uh, snazzy. Adding snazzy. Needing mm, standard. Standard. And that's about it. Yep. Uh, Don't show again. Let's look in the this file. It's added those uh, um, dependencies as well. Uh, next thing is to actually to just start to write something to, to, yeah. to get something up and running. Uh, in, in this case, uh, I will add a uh, and I can do that like an app.js. Of course, you can add it from here as well. Uh, so we have a simple app.js yep. and we just do a console.log hello express. Okay, what about use strict then? Um, maybe we need that as well. <laughs> I'm too 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 used to writing in the in the in, in the browser now and, yeah. and not needing that with ECMAScript modules. Uh, That is pretty much it. Yeah. So uh, let's let's save it and start it. Yeah. And now we don't have a, a start script, so we need to to, to Well, can, in. can't you start it without a start script? Uh, we can do a node app.js. You mean? Yeah. No. Well, Hello. Works. Express. So, so. So, but but we need a start script. Yep. I think. Going to package.json, going into scripts, adding a start script. 
what do we want to do? We want to do node.js um, uh, app.js. Well, the and command I think is just node. Oh, of course. I <laughs> uh, like that. Um, Do, 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 do MPN start. Yep, yep. hello, works. Express works. Um, however, we would like to use, because in this case, uh, we don't have a web server yet. No. So, 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 so in this case, it works because if we do a change, we will just run the program all yep. over. But when we incorporate a web server into this, the server will start listening and, and the program will not return. And in that case, we will need. Uh, Nodemon to help us uh, reload the web server each and every time or reload the script each and every time we make a change. Um, however, should we start off by, okay, so the test, what should we do with the test? Should we remove it? Okay, remove it. Mm -hmm. uh, we will not be using tests in this one. Um, oh, we got a dev start. Uh, okay, so, so, so it, why do we have a dev start and why, why are not using start in this case? Well, to start with, it, it is a custom script name, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as well as lint. And uh, because we want to differentiate how we start application uh, using Nodeman or just Node. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, we got a dev start. Yeah, so if we, we like, we could do an npn run dev start now. Mm -hmm. uh, and save it as well, maybe. And now the application started, it basically ended uh, as well. It's, it's still running now, yeah. uh, but Yes, that's, that's the most, uh, most important part, that yep. it's still re running. Yep. In this case, Control c will leave that mm -hmm. view uh, for now. Uh, or actually, we could actually have it running, right? Yeah. yeah. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh, let's focus our attention to the app.js then. Uh, we need a web server that could just start handling requests. Yeah. Uh, and I think in, in this case, I will not write everything because it will, and, and so would probably you. you you neither. You will probably copy paste a lot of boilerplate code, and we will do this, do that in this case as well. So, uh, should we start off by by just uh, we need to use Express. So maybe we should start off by by adding uh, that to the to the mix, and and we do that by using a require statement. Um, so. Uh, require express and since this is a built or uh, uh, um, uh, well, uh, yeah we we only need to add a name for this we don't need to, to add like it's in the node modules folder okay. because all installed uh, modules are in the node modules folder so 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 uh, uh, the module system will look in 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 that folder and find express uh, there uh, then we need to create a uh, app uh, for uh, Express as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we start off by doing this, and I mean this is basically read the documentation of the framework, and, and and you will know what to write. Uh, after that, we want to, I guess, start uh, with the routes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we will copy some boilerplate code for that as well. Uh, and after the route, we will start the application. So let's do that, uh, because this is what we would like to try out. So, so now we are starting uh, um, the uh, application. It starts listening on port 3000, and we're just logging that uh, uh, the server is running, and it says server running localhost 3000. Uh, so but let, it runs. Yeah, it runs, <laughs> uh, and, and that is because Nodemon saw the change, reloaded mm. the script, and now we're live. So let's look at, oh, actually this way. Let's go to localhost 3000, uh, and we can make that like that. 
Okay, perfectly fine. Something is answering. Mm -hmm. If we are looking in, in, in the inspector, and on the network side of things, reload, we can see that we get a 404 back not found. So Express is probably doing something for us. Yes, in this area. Express cannot find a file, therefore it will just show us a 404, which is totally correct. Yep. That's, uh, that's the way of the framework. Yep. We don't need to, uh, to handle that. And that's a good thing. Maybe we will need to handle it well, still because yes. we want some kind of yeah. custom uh, custom handling of of, mm. uh, of this. But um, now we have a, a web server up and running, listening on port three thousand. Normally this is mm. eighty, of course. But yeah. when when we develop, we don't want to open port eighty on our local machine, so we use port three thousand in this case. Okay. So you wrote that we need routes. Yeah. Um, and if we look at uh, the lecture. Um, we showed this picture uh, of, of the, the basic architecture of the application. Mm. So the client sends a request to our web server and the first thing that will handle this request is the routes, or the yep. routes module, or not module, but yeah, it's a module actually, but the mm -hmm. routes the, the routes in the framework. And we the routes will redirect to the controller, the controller we use the view template engine to pre present something to the client, and we will skip the model part in this demo. Yep. Uh, since we are just echoing back what is sent to us. So let's start setting up routes then. Um, we're using the app.use. Mm -hmm. uh, we are telling what to listen for. In this case, we want to listen for the, the, the slash or the, 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 the root route. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or the base route. I mean, when we go to localhost 3000, we want to listen what happens when we visit that default page. Um, in this case, I guess we could just write a function here, right? Yeah. Uh, and that takes two arguments, the request and the response. Oh. Request, response. Like that. Ah, but my God. Well, you don't need the curly brackets. I think. In this case, I will not because we do a console log. You mean? Okay. Oh no, 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 no. no. Response oh. send. Sorry, I'm yeah. I'm on the client again. Response send. Uh, we want to send something back to the client. Yeah. And we will send uh, hello yeah. Express again. Yeah. Whatever. Something like that. Okay, so, so now we have set up a route, listening for the for for the for the route. Uh, when we get that, we send something back, and hopefully this will uh, hopefully this will work when I save at least. Uh, let's try that one. Reload. Hello Express, and now we will get a 200 back from yeah. the server. So everything is up and running good. I mean. Now we could like, okay, I want my next one to be uh, and and just make functions yes. here and do whatever we like. However, the problem is that the code inside of, of this one will not be as simple in, <laughs> in many no. cases. We need to generate views, we need to do some, in the long run, we need to contact the model mm. to save and uh, do things like that. So it's not a good thing to, good practice to, to write, write our logic inside of app.js. Uh, uh, and the web application can have many routes yep well we just use one in this example but we will use the i don't know what to say we will use uh the same pattern yeah for for, for i mean if if, 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 if this it, one is is for the root folder and we want some some other what we do about snippet. or snippets, <laughs> yeah, snippet. You will do that in a, in a, in, a, in a lab probably. Uh, we can do it like that. So so everything that is in in the snippet part of the URL yeah. will be handled in in, in the next uh, router, and we can have the the app.js basically just mm -hmm. setting up the routes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we need to refactor. Yeah. The code. And in this case, we should probably remove this and add it to to a separate file. Yeah. Uh, and we need that file to live in a, a folder named uh, routes. So I will add a folder, uh, name it routes, like that. Uh, and inside of the routes, 
we will create a new file. We will make it so home router, maybe like that. Uh, and in this one, we could, uh, yeah, you could actually know should we write it? Yeah, we write it. Uh, we still need to use express and we need to use use strict, unfortunately. Strict. Uh, we need to use express still, so const express equals require uh, express. Nee. Writing too, too few lines of code nowadays. <laughs> um, not after today. No, <laughs> no, not after today. Uh, in this one, uh, we also need to handle routes. Yeah. And uh, you need to use. Well, should you write it or? Yeah, just yes, copy it in. It's, it's, it's faster. Uh, we need to, to use. Uh, oh, yeah, I will just uh, add the boilerplate code, okay? Yep, yeah, start by doing that. Mm. What did we do? We we uh, uh, we are using the router. Uh, we're calling a router method on on the express object to get a router, mm -hmm. and uh, the the router I guess differs from app dot use. App dot use is a middleware that will and get us a request. How, yeah. Or how how can we differ between a router and uh, app dot use? Well, well, uh, I really don't know what to say about it, but you can look at it uh, as a uh, uh, specialized, maybe, uh, extension of the... Yeah, that, that will do things that we often want to do, like separating HTTP methods, for yeah. instance. Uh, we, we will often need to listen for, on the one hand, on the get method, and on the other hand, on post methods. Uh, so... Let's start by using the router to, and we can see what methods we have, to do a simple get. Yeah. Now it's interesting. This, what I write in this one, right, is relative to whatever we specified in app.use. Yes. So, so if, if we were to be in snippet that, that we showed, Everything we write here is relative to, to slash snippet yes. slash. We will show uh, that. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Later okay. On. Uh, so so in this case we just will still be in the root folder yeah. uh, or in the uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the index file. Uh, oh, then we can do a the same thing. Yep. Yeah, uh, how do we get hold of? Yeah, we do like oh. that, right? Yeah. Uh, we do request response. Um, response send, we are send. Hello, Hello router. router. Yeah, and I should use single quotes, of course. Like that. Um, and we look at reloading. Nothing happens since we haven't set anything up, I think, on the app.js, right? It still says hello, send uh, hello express. So now we need to connect this app.use to that router. Uh, and we do that by requiring, uh, in this case, dot slash routes. And it was called home. Yeah, it shows up even. Perfect. Like that. Yeah. Uh, and what are we? Exporting from from home router, we are exporting the router yeah. object. So we are basically just sending the router object to app.use. Reloading. Hello router. Hello router. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Well, now now you can go in and you can change in app.js. So we can take a look what happens if you not just write a slash mm -hmm. for the route. Uh, we do snippet them. Like that? Yeah, mm -hmm. whatever. Reload. This one will probably get us a 404. And then I need to do like that. Uh, and snippet. 
Uh -huh. And it says okay. hello router. Yeah. Uh, so this is quite convenient when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, um, organizing the routes. But we will get back to that one. We will remove the snippet because we will be in the, that one for now. Okay, well, what's next? Well, I the mean, con the controller. Yeah, yeah, we need. I mean, now we need to do some work. Oh, or well, next thing is actually we need to have. We should be able to post something to this eventually. Yeah. Is the controller the first step or is it the view? Is it the... I think it's uh, the controller. The controller, okay. So, same thing with controllers. Controllers is just another way of placing the code, basically, yeah. than having it together with the routes. Of course, mm. you could write logic here um, and connect it to the view right away, but we think it's good practice to separate it into a controller, mm. like we did on... on, on this image. So, uh, so let the routes send the data uh, to the, or let the controller handle the data. Well, the routes choose the right controller. Yep. Yeah. Uh, then we need a controller. I guess, no, not there. Uh, we need it like that. Controller. Um, and should oh, we name it? If, if if controllers. controllers. Uh, Naming convention, you know. Yep, controllers. That is matter, but that ah, could be a good thing to have it like that. Uh, in this case, since I guess that the home router will send things to the home controller. Correct. So let's make make it home controller. I mean, this is just a naming convention. It's nothing yeah. that is binding. You can name the controller whatever you like, but when the code grows, it will be much easier yeah, yes, definitely. if you have it like this. Okay, so, home controller. Oh! Too quick. Rename if controller... No! It's Friday, we said that before. <laughs> that. Uh, Nay. No, it's correct. Okay, the home controller. What are we supposed to do in the controller? Well, the just work. something or, or point out, so to speak, the right view mm. to show. Yeah. So we need a function that can be associated with a route. Yeah. So. It's it's the start page. What what do we usually name start pages? Index. Yeah. Yep. Create and and function name to index them. Uh, then we do that by yes. Okay, I can do it like this. Uh, and we will probably need to send some data to this one. Yep. Uh, we will need a request and response at least. Yes. So let's start with that. Uh, and in this case, yeah, we could have it like that. Okay, so I have a function, of course, const. Yep. Well, just to proof of concept, I think. So we could. Whoops. Um, we could do something like that. Okay, fine. Yeah, it should work, I think. Cool. Uh, what happened? Not deep equal. Um, so this module only exports that function. Yeah, that's it. And in this one... Well, hello controller, maybe? Yep. <laughs> like that. Why? Yes. Four. Yeah, but should be two. Why it didn't do four? Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, hello controller. We you need got, you got four spaces. Yeah, I have. Why? Oh, I need to change that later. Uh, in their home router, instead of doing that, we could probably do a request on right. 
uh, require on uh, the controller. Let's try it like this. Uh, and then we will be controllers, home controller, I can't. No. Just no. the name of the function. Yeah, yeah, of course. We will change it. Like that. Yep. Mm. Uh, okay, did it work? Hello, yep. controller. Woo! So, basically, we are just telling to use this function instead of adding yeah. another function here. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why it works. Uh, and we want to separate the logic from the route, yep. the route the logic to the... Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, now we have everything set up right here. Uh, now we're just sending back text. Mm -hmm. I guess that the next good thing is to send back HTML instead. Yes, I think so. Using nothing less than the view. Yeah. And now we need a template engine and everything set up. And that's quite a lot of code. <laughs> that's quite we a lot we of need code. to start in the app.js, I think, to, to set up uh, using handlebars uh, mm. to get all of this working. So I will probably need some help with some uh, boilerplate code in this case to, uh, first of all, uh, you require yeah required express dot hps because we need to use that module and we, we need to set up the engine yep magic and now we are telling express to use the handlebar for express four and they need to know what path is so yeah. And in this case, we are just pointing out what the <coughs> um, directories are called yeah. and, and the default file for. Well, we don't uh, we don't want to specify which uh, layout to use for every other mm. uh, view. So we define a default, yeah, default layout. layout. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we call that default layout in in the will be in the views folder, yeah. in the layouts folder, and it will be called default.hps yeah. in this case. So let's start by adding a views folder. Uh, inside of the views folder, we add a layouts folder. Inside of the layouts folder, we add a default.hps. Well, yeah, no, not HTML. No, HBS. HBS. Important. Oh, I got a mustache as well on, mm -hmm. on that one. Um, in this one, we could start writing HTML, but I think you have some boilerplate code for this, so we will skip that part. Uh, and in this one, uh, just some simple, simple layer, uh, boilerplate code, and this is where our main code or our body will will uh, show up when using mm. this default layout. Yep. Um, that's it. Uh, and we have done that. Have we missed anything in app.js? Always mix this up. But we have... Yeah, we need to... This is... I'm not really sure what we are doing here. But we are... It depends on the view engine, what you okay. need to do, and so read the documentation. Yeah, and the documentation says do this. Yes. Yeah. Now we should be kind of able to start using the view. Yep. Uh, and we will not use the view in the router, we will use the view in the controller, of course. How do we do that? Oh, controller... I want to see it on the 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah, we need to, to render something. Uh, and in this case... Well, um, when we use send, we just send the text. Yeah. Well, now we want to render a view. Mm -hmm. So we use the command render instead. And what we need to, to specify then, the, the, it, it's the name of the view or oh, the path to the view yep. regarding um, to views, yep. the views folder. folder. And in the same manner that we have created routes and controllers, we need to create a view that will yep. go into this default layout with it. Uh, we will probably name that one home yes. view or something like home. that. Just home. Just home. home. Uh, and what's the name of the, the function? It's index, yeah. so maybe we create that one inside of the homes folder yeah. inside of that. This is the name of convention. Uh, very common in different kind of different uh, frameworks as ASP.NET and oh, well Ruby as well, I think. Mm -hmm. Like that. Inside of this one, we could just write hello view to start off. Yeah. Uh, go back to the controller. So the controller is rendering the view index. The in this view will use the uh, default layout. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, the framework knows where to search for home index because that's what we specified in app yep. JS when yep. we set the view engine. Yep. Reload. Hello, you! Oh, style.css not found. We will add that one as well. Oh. Um, well I think it could be quite interesting to see, to take a look at the uh, rendered HTML. Yep. Looks like this. Um, so, so this is the default. Ev ev oh, so everything that is found in default HBS is found here and our hello index view. Yeah, was put where it said body in, yeah. in, in that view uh, or that layout. Uh, just go ahead and add a CSS folder. Uh, we need that as well. Where should we add that? that? Should we add that inside of the views or where well, is... Uh, I think the, the most common way to solve that problem is to, to specify a folder named public. For all our public resources. So yeah. I did made a file. Stupid me. I should really start learning the, sh the shorthands. So so we are always switching up the <laughs> uh, the editors. So so so, so I, I I've never learned the short codes <laughs> for for doing stuff. And in this case, public. Uh, and we add a CSS folder yes. inside of that one, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and inside of that one we could add a file named style.css and you can just copy in some boilerplate code in that one as well. So we have it like that. Okay. We'll load. Now, how do, does it know that it should search for the CSS in the public folder then? It just knows. It does? <laughs> Doesn't say anything about public here. Nope. Oh, that's it's the framework specific thingy then. Yeah, because it loads the style. Or did it? Oh, I don't think so. It's no, it did like not. Uh, I, I guess we missed something. Mm, let me take a look at that. Public CSS. Mm. I think that, that yeah that yes, one the the one. where to use yeah. yeah we need to specify where to add the static resources yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that one. so okay well, you got app and art of the view engine set up we need to add some additional middleware and we start with public folder. Yeah, and now we're telling Express that static files can be found in the public folder. Yeah. So everything will be uh, relative to that folder. In this case it's the CSS folder. 
and it still doesn't work. Oh, it's actually no, oh, doesn't work. <laughs> That's strange. It's called public. It's called CSS. It's called style.css. We look in that one. It says CSS styles. It's called styles. It's your mm -hmm. S that screwed things up for me like that. Styles.css and then we reload and you all know now we find you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Styles are on on the field now and we we are generating the view. Should we add some boilerplate code to the view as well? To the uh, uh, home view. Uh, where is it? It's the index view, this one. Sorry, what? the wifey. I can, <laughs> I can continue. Do, do, do. So let's do that. We add that to, oh, where are we? Many computers. Like that. Uh, in this case, I only add a P element. We add a form. Uh, that will use the post method. We'll get back to that. Uh, we'll have an input type text where we will place our name and input type submit that will send this. And we can actually skip the view data part for now. So we are only adding in a form. Uh, so reload that one. And now it looks something like this. However, in this case, uh, we... Uh, have a form that is posting data. Uh, so if I try to post data, in this case, hello, no, new one, and send it to the server, we will just get a 404. Mm -hmm. And it actually says cannot post to the root folder. Well, and mm -hmm. that is because we don't have a route for, yeah, for we handling will, we that. We post the form, yeah. Yep. Uh, looking in the router, we can see that we are handling get requests, but not mm -hmm. post requests. So we could probably do more or less the same thing. However, it's telling that post requests should be handled in the indexed post. Yeah. Oh, now I'm adding this one all over again. So probably a better way of doing that. Const is to add the require only once. Uh, const, uh, we can call it home controller, require. That one, should we do that up here where we require the express and then we do a home controller index and a home controller index post like that. Uh, oh, it can't find the index post so it crashes. Uh, let's go to the controller then. Okay, we only have an index of course so we add a index post like that um, and now we need to uh, export uh, index post as well like that <coughs> uh, should we maybe just look in the request object on this one uh, and do a without using the view we could just do something like i don't know uh, okay um, you know what i'm getting at uh, how do i find the uh, the data well that you, is you need to use a property name body mm. body and then the, the name of the uh, and it was called text fields you used name right name. You can try that. So when we post this one, this should be, be be executed, and hopefully we can get a result. Cannot read property name of undefined, undefined. body was undefined. Request dot body. I thought it was like that. Wow. Ah. I think this is. Uh, one more. We are missing a middleware. 
Yeah. Ah. Let's go back to app and add another middleware. What does this do then? It makes everything work. <laughs> it just makes everything work. Okay, let's see about that. <laughs> well, we we try out. Yeah, it yes. actually did. Yeah. Uh, I I I I'm not really sure what happened actually. We were using a middleware called URL encoded extended false. So so that makes. Well, it takes receiving the, well, it, take, it takes the form data and put it in the in, in the, the body, body, uh, of, body the, of the request okay. object. Yep. So now that works. However, now we are kind of not using the view. We are just sending back data. Well, well it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah. But now we should, as as we did with this one, we should call a view instead. Should we call the same view or should we have a separate view for this one? Should we go well, and look at the application? Should look something like this. Yes, it could be a separate view, but uh, I think we, we, we use the same view. Yeah, since, since it's, it's basically just an extension of, of yeah. the original view. Um, and if we take a look, I, I don't remember, what, what part did you copy? I was I was talking to my wife, you know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I didn't copy at all, so so we, we missed ah. some some parts. So this is was only the form. Yeah. Uh, and now we need to. I mean, we want something like uh, hello, whatever you're called. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you can go ahead and, and 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 insert that code. I guess we can start in that end. Uh, okay. Or. So what we did here is that we are actually looking to get some data to, to the view, sent to the view. And we are, want this data in form of a view data object. Yeah. So we are checking, do we have any data? Is there a view data object? If not, we do nothing. If there is, we want to look inside of mm -hmm. that object, extract the name and the day of, yeah. of the... Uh, and we can see as the syntax is, is if we don't want to, to write this kind of code into to much extent in, in the views, so we will try to prepare the data we, we, we are viewing as much as we can. Yeah, because we could, I mean, instead of sending the day name, for instance, we could have just sent a, a date object, yeah. and then we could have parsed that date object to find a day and, and yeah. do, do some kind of logic in the view, but you are not not an uh, advocate for, for, for doing Definitely things like that not. In, in, in the view. Okay. Why? Okay, I've done it myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not, the right, it's not the right way to go. Okay, so we will try to prepare as much as possible inside of the yeah. controller. Okay, but then we need a way to send the view data from the controller into the view. Yep. Because if we, we can try to render this view now. So I reload the page. And it still works. It doesn't crash or anything, no. and that that is, and it doesn't show some some text, and that is because of this statement that says that we oh, we don't have a view data, no. so it will not show this. Otherwise, we will we'll get uh, undefined. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Well, view data is undefined, and, and I mean, we, we can't get any properties on, on, on undefined, and the application would crash. Yeah. Oh no, it actually did not. Yeah, well, no, it did not. Well, it, it's probably just saying. I don't know, but it says welcome on this wonderful. Well, well undefined then. Yeah, <laughs> probably something like that. Whoop, wrong way. Uh, so we need those to, to, to get rid of that. Okay, going back to the home controller then. Uh, how do we prepare the data? How do we send in the data to, to this, uh, this view? Well, the second parameter. The second parameter, okay. So we want to send in something here. We would like to send in the view data, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and we need to create a view data object then. Uh, well, we, we we don't do that. Okay, just send in an object. Yes, an an object with with a property of view data, like that. Yeah, we can can you can give it some name or you mean well, like in view data? We'll hard code it there. Well, then well, I need to do it like that. I guess. Well, I don't know what you you write it. <laughs> I write it. Okay, <laughs> that's the good thing of having uh, those connected. Well, uh, 
<laughs> so your controller is... empty? Yeah. Why? It's just two dots. Hmm. Then you can't try it. No. You mean like this? Yeah, but but you need to name it view data. An object in an object. Yeah. Like that. Yes. Okay, now I get it. Uh, oh, this will be messy. We need a space before the limit. But what's what's the Yeah, it is correct, yeah. right? Yeah. Name and uh well, stop it there. Okay. It works anyhow. Like that? Well you just need Okay, fine. Hmm? Yeah, works. Um, yeah, and, and, and the reason why we need to have an object within an object is, or an object within an object, mm -hmm. is that we could do it like, I guess, <coughs> if we were to do it like I wanted in the first place, like that. Just sending in an object, mm -hmm. then in this one we would just get the name, yes, like that. Well, yeah, and then we could get collisions and we yeah. so the views and the controllers or or whatever. But but to use the this kind of of data is called locals. But we want to separate, so we can have different kind of local data. Mm. We will we will prepare the view data object in the controller and in the app.js we can add additional data if, if we want to the, to the locals and to avoid collision we name the view data from the controller in this way yep and i rewrote it so that it's a little bit prettier yeah i, I just make it as a variable and or a constant and then we could actually do something like this and we have a name and we can look in the view what was the other one it was called the day name uh, so we need a day name as well um, free friday uh, pop, pop, pop. Well, works. Yep. Be a hassle to, 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 to have someone updating this script all, <laughs> all the time. So, we, of course, we need to dynamically find out Friday and we need to the, get Joan from the request. And yeah. we already know how to get get the name from the well, request. That, that's the easy part, yes. Yes, so, so let's do that. It's request.body. Body. Uh, body dot name, name. Yeah. and uh, reload and it says welcome you and that is because I'm reloading the um, um, the post well double posted it yep yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's say uh, Mats instead and it says welcome Mats yeah. on this wonderful Friday okay how to get the Friday you had a, a module called moment you can, I can use strict as well, and you can paste that ah, one. Used. No, you I can't. can't, I can't, you can't. The control log. const moment. Can't see why. Uh, require, and it was called moment, like that. And moment is just a fancy date object, I guess. I, I, I have never used that one, so I don't know. Format, and it tells us, uh, probably read a documentation of moment, yeah. it will tell you to, to, to write it like that, and you will get the... For this give you, gives you the, the name of the, the full name of the, the day. Can I reload? Oh, I can, it will say the same thing, well, so... It will still say Friday because it is Friday. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, but but it it seems to work at least, um, and that is it 
for now. So we have sent it to, we have the view. Uh, the view can handle this. And, and, and by this you can pretty much set everything up yeah. just the way you like it. You could create different views, of course, for, mm. for different uh, applications and you will do that for logins mm -hmm. and, and things like that. We will get to that later on. Uh, there is some things that we don't handle. We will not, for instance, handle this well still. Nope. It, it, we get a 404, but it's well, just an ugly, ugly message in this case. So maybe we should add a custom uh, 404 page as well. Um, do we, where do we add that? Because that would be, I, I mean, we could probably render it using the view engine if we like. If we like, yes, but oh. But that might be unnecessary. So in this case, we just add it stat statically. And then when it's static, we add it in the public folder. Yep. Uh, 404.html. Uh, do we have some boilerplate, boilerplate code for that one? Have it there, I guess. Okay. <laughs> no idea where we found this, but okay. Yep. And we need to do something about that in app.js, I guess, as well. To to tell Express to use our custom 404 page. Uh, and I guess it's important where we do this. Well, can we can st yeah, start by you doing, doing it the wrong the wrong way or yeah the wrong way. And the wrong way is that. And and if you look at this code, you could probably find out what will happen in this case. Um, that we can try. Oh, the 404 works. Yes. Hooray. Well, I, I'm, I'm, now we can take the Friday off. Go I'm home not. without checking yeah. that one. However, yeah. page not found. Yeah, yeah, so everything is page not found right now because it will never get to our routes. Uh, so let's switch, switch it up and add it after the routes instead. Application still works. Write anything here. Page not found. Not Perfect. What if our application uh, will crash? What will happen there? Could we make it crash? Okay. Uh, something like that. Yeah, in the. Uh, Whoa. Throw. Is it like that? Error. Error, yep. No. Uh, reload. Dunk. Mm. That's not too good. Nope. Now we are like showing the world where our, how, our how files are located, yes. the internals, they could probably find out quite a lot by just looking at, yep. at this. So, so we must ha handle errors in a better way. A better way, I guess, is logging the errors and yes. showing... To start with, we will not show that for yep. a user. Yeah. Uh, to the user. Uh, so let's go in. We will save that one. We'll go into the app.js. Okay. Uh, same thing here applies, I guess. We need to handle the errors and we need to handle the errors uh, uh, after we set up the routes and after we do the catch 404. So how do we do that? Okay, we are app use. And in this case, the signature of the function differs from, from the other two. This one said require response and next. Uh, and in this case, it says error request response and next. So if an error occurs in, in, in the controller, the router, the model, or whatever, this function will be called. Yep. And we are just looking at the status 
we're setting this we're looking at the status if it's not specified we are say 500 because yeah. this is an internal server error yeah. so we need to, to to show that to the client that this, it's it's a server problem it's not the client problem of course the server problem could be generated out of the client mm. doing something it should not but we haven't handled it in a good way anyway i would need to say that th this is a very 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 simple way to handle the 500 yeah, yeah, error yeah uh, and then we just send an error message back with an uh, with response point send. Yep. Uh, and we set the status code of five hundred. So so let's let's look at the difference. Reload. I will send it once again. Um, it says no. no, and that is because that was what I well, I've we need to do. And uh, we look in in the inspector as well. And we got we hopefully we hopefully got a yep. Network. Reload says status 500. Yes. So good. And do we want to log it as well? You had some kind of uh, module oh, for that. Uh, right. I um, haven't looked at that. Uh, that's quite interesting, I think. Mm. Mm. Right window, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we need to use Morgan. So call it logger mm -hmm. and the only thing I need to do is to add uh, this middleware and that's about it hmm. and we can take a look in the terminal window when you when you make a request mm -hmm. or so now it's running I need to save it reloads crashed uh, it, there is an S somewhere at online 35, an additional S. Oh, wasn't yeah. me. It was me, probably. <laughs> yep, going back, reloading, going down, whoa. debugger, whoa. Oh, post 500. Yep, and now we, we get simple log. I mean, yeah. of course, this should probably be added to a file somewhere, and we could yeah, have like. But but, 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 but this, this is a simple, is, yeah, simple, simple example. Simple example, and when you develop them, that's that's quite an interesting uh, information. So, so you can easily understand what route mm. is requested. Yep, and what happened. Yep. With this, I think we have made a pretty simple standard boilerplate for an express application using the model view controller yeah. pattern. I, I guess. think so. Yeah, and we will build upon this by adding uh, persistent data handling yep. using, in our case, Mongoose. I think uh, Mongo and Mongoose. Mm -hmm. uh, we will add authentication authorization to this. Yes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and. Then we will start looking at real-time mm. uh, applications as well, but that is later on. But I think you have a pretty good starting point, at yep. least for now. With it, and what, with what to remember? Naming, naming, naming. Yeah. Uh, and I will point out that, I mean, we are using Express 4 in this yep. demo, and we are using the common uh, JS modules. Yep. Uh, this might change in the future, so, so don't be surprised if, like, you should, instead of using require, you should using import in this case. By, but that is just a minor min, minor thing to fix. But, but uh, we, we have used it with common case. And I think by that we are done, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, back. We forgot <laughs> one thing. <laughs> one, one important thing. First of all, of course, I removed the, <laughs> the, the, the exception from, from the controller because, yeah, we we don't want that. Uh, next up is this. 5K. Yeah, it says that we have 5K of changes in our uh, Git repository. So let, let, let's look how that looks. Get Git status. Um, why do we have like 5,000 or more files that are unhandled? Well, we have the node modules folder yeah. still, still present. We should never ever ignore this. Yeah, or, we should. Or we should. We should <laughs> ignore this one. We should never uh, uh, add node modules to our uh, uh, Git repositories. So we need a 
dot git ignore ignore git ignore uh, inside of this one you you probably pro you probably have some fancy um, tool to, to, to generate okay. this but in this case it's well, I, I, I really have <laughs> but you haven't <laughs> okay no. um, didn't it show up no git ignore you have a fancy icon as well so. but uh, why don't I see we don't have a git ignore in that one well I have oh you have well, not not on this. Um, okay. Hmm. How should I, we? I, I, yeah, I stop writing. We want to to oh, ignore. Uh, that one right. Or yeah, you, 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 we can create one by using, actually, that could be a good thing to show. Uh, git ignore, uh, git ignore dot io. Um, you can generate git ignore files using this service. Yep. Uh, we have Visual Studio Code. We have Node. Uh, we have... I don't think we need to specify Express because no, I don't know. it's just we're using Visual Studio Code, it's Node. I'm on Ubuntu, maybe that could. Uh, I think that's about it. Let's, let's create it like that. Copy. Then I don't need to make it wrong. Let's see. Did we get a get, get, a, get did we get a node modules in here? We should node modules it's underscore of course. That what didn't work. Node modules. So we have that one in there as well. Saving that one. Uh, that one still says five k. I don't trust it. This looks better. Now it's actually not ignoring the .vs code. Shouldn't it do that? Nope. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 different parts. Of, yeah. Uh, we can take a look at it. And now I can do an uh, npm add uh, all. Um, no, git. <laughs> I'm adding. What did I do? Well, oh, I, I well. don't know. <laughs> git add dot, of course. Git commit. Boiler plate. Hmm. Ah, I'm not allowed to write <laughs> an explanation mark, of course. And now I can push this to yeah. to my repository in GitHub. That was it, basically. Just don't forget the git ignore. Don't forget That's the message. Message. Bye.